we need to talk about the importance to the Second Amendment movement of Donald Trump being re-elected President of the United States to ensure that appropriate judges that respect the Constitution are appointed not just to the federal bench generally, but more specifically to the United States Supreme Court. Some people push back to say that any Republican president would get us to the same outcome that President Trump did with his, he, with his three appointments to the U.S. Supreme Court, but that does not prove true when one reviews history. And I want you to be aware of this history as you go out and defend the importance of President Trump being reelected to protect our Second Amendment rights over the anti-gunners of the Biden-Harris administration. Stay tuned for this. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Boxes Diner, proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and author of Israel Disarmed, What the 10-7 Attacks on Israel by Hamas Teach Americans About the Right to Bear Arms. Check it out on Amazon. All right, folks, so I know there's a lot in the news about the elections. I'm not going to repeat things that you can read on X or in the papers or you hear me talk about on Fox News or whatever it is. I'm going to try to give you information that you probably are not going to think about or find elsewhere, and that is this. We've talked about the importance of President Trump being elected president of the United States if you support, support the right to keep and bear arms. You may think he's not perfect. I disagree. I think he is the best Second Amendment president we've ever had uh, because most of the presidents we've had in American history have simply not had to confront the multi-billion dollar attacks on the right to keep and bear arms that the modern Republican presidents have had to deal with. And I think of all of them, Donald Trump has done the best of all of them. And I like to give you some illustrations to prove the point. Now, we all understand the affirmative case for President Trump on the right to keep and bear arms, the best evidence, and by far and away, the most important bit of evidence in support of Donald Trump and, and, and his support of the right to keep and bear arms, in addition to his endorsement from the NRA and various gun groups, and of course, his endorsement of Elon by Elon Musk, who literally has a petition that requires you to sign that you have a, that you support the right to free speech and the right to bear arms, and they're extremely important to qualify for that million dollar a, a million dollar a day bonus, if you will, uh, that he's set up, I believe, in Pennsylvania. So obviously, a lot of people recognize the importance of the right to keep and bear arms. But I think what's particularly important um, is that President Trump has been very good at appointing judges. Now, someone has said to me that any Republican president would have picked the same good on Second Amendment judges or justices that Donald Trump did, and the reality as that is simply hooey. And I want you to understand why I say this. To begin with, we know that prior to the appointment of Donald Trump's three justices to the U.S. Supreme Court, Justice Neil Gorsuch, Justice Brett Kavanaugh, and Justice Amy Coney Barrett, the right to keep and bear arms outside the home had not been established. Now, as a practical matter, it should have been established. It was an easy answer in a layup case, but the U.S. Supreme Court refused to deal with this. This despite the fact that they had opportunities prior to the appointment of the three Trump appointees to the United States Supreme Court, including the Rogers case, the Rogers case out of the state of New Jersey that literally framed up the question of whether or not the Second Amendment guarantees and codifies the right to carry guns outside the home for self-defense. And that case of Rogers out of New Jersey was denied cert because obviously, for whatever reason, I'm guessing the Supreme Court did not think they had five votes to say the obvious answer, which is yes, of course, the Second Amendment protects the right to keep and bear arms to carry guns outside the home for self-defense. It was only after the appointment and confirmation of Justice Amy Coney Barrett that the Bruin case was then taken by the United States Supreme Court and a six to three res result in favor of the Second Amendment was issued in that powerful Bruin case. Now, that is not random. Donald Trump and his advisors, who he respected and trusted enough to go with, picked those three justices. Now, I want to remind you of a history of the kinds of justices that we've gotten on the U.S. Supreme Court picked by other Republican presidents. And I think this history is very important as you realize just how good President Trump was in picking his justices. Are they all perfect? Do we agree with everything those three justices do on every case? No, there are certainly some things that I disagree with what they did, what they wrote, how they dealt with it, some of the decisions. Yes, that is a consequence of picking justices that respect the rule of law and are trying to get it right as opposed to being partisan hacks. But our justices do try to get it right and they do follow the text and sometimes there are disagreements among people that are earnestly considering what the law means, which is why you do get decisions that are not unanimous in front of the U.S. Supreme Court on 
on occasion because the cases are sometimes present very difficult questions of law where there could be potentially multiple right answers. Okay, with that said, I want to remind you of the history of Republican presidents screwing up, in my opinion, picks to the United States Supreme Court when it comes to our Second Amendment right to bear arms. That's what I want to focus on, not these other issues. I want to focus on the Second Amendment specifically. So let's go back to the 1970s with President Gerald Ford, and we'll move up to the present. So President Ford nominated and had confirmed to the United States Supreme Court Justice John Paul Stevens. Now, Justice Stevens was so terrible on the Second Amendment that he literally dissented from the Heller and the McDonald decisions. That's how bad Justice Stevens is. A Republican appointee to the United States Supreme Court opposed the right to keep and bear arms. Then we move into the 1980s, where President Ronald Reagan nominated, and I understand politically why he did this. He wanted to put the first woman on the Supreme Court. That was kind of a campaign promise he had indicated. So President Ronald Reagan picked uh, Sandra Day O'Connor as his first Supreme Court pick. I understand politically why he did that, but the truth is Justice O'Connor was well known to be against the Second Amendment. And all I can say is, although I'm sad uh, that her, that she and her husband uh, came down with dementia and Alzheimer's and she had to leave the bench to take care of her uh, demented husband, which is true, uh, she had to leave the bench and Justice Alito replaced her. But the truth is, everyone knew that Just Sandra Day O'Connor would have come out against us in the Heller case, and we would have lost the right to keep and bear arms as an individual right in a 5-4 to four decision if Sandra Day O'Connor, a Reagan pick to the federal bench, was on the Supreme Court in the Heller case. I think a lot of people believe that, and that's what I believe as well. Beyond that, President Reagan also, uh, because the Robert Bork nomination failed, uh, President Reagan nominated and was confirmed, Justice Anthony Kennedy, who, of course, did rule in favor of the Second Amendment in Heller and in McDonald, but obviously would not go beyond that because there was many Second Amendment cases presented when Justice Kennedy was that fifth vote on the court, and none of those cases were taken. They were all turned away, which indicates, if you understand how the Supreme Court works, there were unlikely to be five votes in support of the Second Amendment, and that's why none of those cases were granted cert. Again, so you have Stevens, O'Connor, and Kennedy all picks by, the United, by a Republican president, yet bad on the Second Amendment. Then you have George Bush the first. that's Herbert Walker Bush. He picked David Souter for the United States Supreme Court, and Justice Souter dissented against us in Heller. So David Souter was terrible on the Second Amendment. He came out of New Hampshire. It was a terrible pick. Uh, again, we don't need to belabor that point. That's a whole subject of a separate video. But Justice Souter came out of the state of New Hampshire, and uh, obviously screwed up the Second Amendment. He was in the dissent in Heller and opposed the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms in all respect. Another Republican pick to the Supreme Court that screwed up the Second Amendment. And then, of course, while this is not as catastrophic, I think it goes to the squishy, 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 do, squishy, 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 yes, you do. Anyway, a little bit of song there about our favorite Chief Justice in modern era, and that is, of course, squishy Chief Justice John Roberts. So anyway, we know that while John Roberts is a very reliable sixth vote, hear what I just said, Justice Roberts is a very reliable sixth vote on Second Amendment cases. He's far less reliable fifth vote or swing vote, and we know that for many reasons. So while it is good to have Chief Justice John Roberts on the court as a sixth vote when you don't really need him to make a decision, the truth is he was a George W. Bush appointee to the federal bench and, um, well, you know, like I said, he has, uh, I, I, I'll tell you my personal opinion here, is I think that Chief Justice John Roberts would have been a much better associate justice. I think that once you elevated him to Chief Justice, which they did as a matter of convenience, the Bush administration did, I think that in hindsight was a mistake because I don't think he has the fortitude of appropriate for a chief justice where you're going around saying that we're going to talk about the history of the Roberts court, I think he probably would have been better positioned and probably would have been more comfortable and happy personally and professionally as my guess if he was simply an associate justice as opposed to being the chief justice with the court named after him, i.e. the Roberts court. Nevertheless, um, the reason why I say that as a note is because I think that when you are the chief justice, there are other institutional concerns you have to cons consider. In addition to being on the U.S. Supreme Court and making good decisions, you often also have to consider testifying before Congress sometimes. you got to talk about the federal budget. You also have to represent all federal judges here. What I just said, all federal 
judges before Congress and in the public eye. So you have these other institutional considerations as a chief justice. So if you have someone that starts prioritizing other things over the rule of law and the original understanding of the Second Amendment and the Constitution, you can sometimes get some concerning or disconcerting uh, conflicts um, and, and distractions, which again, I don't think John Roberts is necessarily the best when it comes uh, to overcoming some of these distractions and institutional considerations and you know doing what needs to be done to restore American constitutional law uh, to a place it never should have left. So again, while I don't think Chief Justice John Roberts was terrible, I don't think he's uh, as good as the three justices that Donald Trump picked in Barrett, Kavanaugh, and Gorsuch. So anyway, the bottom line is I've just gone through a list of Supreme Court picks from Republican presidents that were not nearly as good at all as the three picks from President Donald Trump. And mind you, if you want to talk about other terrible Republican picks in hindsight, keep in mind that Frank Easterbrook in the United States Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit in Chicago, terrible, terrible, terrible anti-gun judge, um, gave us that Beavis and Butthead, also known as Bevis opinion, involving assault weapon bans. He's done other terrible things on the Second Amendment. He's horrible on the Second Amendment. And Judge Easterbrook was a Republican pick to the federal bench. So was Judge Wilkinson in the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals, another Republican pick to the federal bench, who is absolutely pathetic and terrible on the right to keep and bear arms. So with all that said, as you're thinking about who to vote for and how to talk to your friends about this election, the importance to the Second Amendment, there's a lot of reasons why President Trump is the obvious choice, but I want to focus on the judges because at the end of the day, the Supreme Court is a third branch of government and a very, very important one to protect our right to keep and bear arms, as you know. So it's very important that I think President Trump gets more Supreme Court picks over the picks he will see from uh, a President Kamala Harris or a President Joe Biden, who will give us more Justice Brown Jacksons, who there is 0% chance you're ever going to win any gun-related case or Second Amendment-related case if you get more justices like that on the Supreme Court. So anyway, there you have it. Just some food for thought. I want to give it to you uh, here and now because you may not hear this in other places. If there's any other questions or comments or criticisms, feel free to share them down below. Don't forget to follow me on X, by the way, at 4 Boxes Downer. And uh, don't forget to uh, like this video and subscribe to this channel. Circulate it to your friends. Feel free to do so. And we look forward to talking to you very, uh, very soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up. Table 2A.